We have put 30,000 miles on our Volkswagen ID4 in just over a year. And I am going to share with you how it's been for us and you know what you might expect over the first 30,000 miles. In this video, we are going to cover the interior, range and charging, the driving comfort of the ID4, the reliability and build quality. We're also going to talk about the software and the app and any maintenance and cost of that maintenance that we've had to deal with. Now, our car was a 2021 ID4 Pro S non-gradient. So it has the 19 inch wheels, rear wheel drive with a 250 mile range. Now, what we're going to talk about today is going to pertain to most ID4s, whether it's a 21, 22, 23. A lot of this stuff that we're going to talk about will be the same things and same issues you might see with your car. Although in some of the pictures and some of the video you might see, if you have a US built ID4, the interior is going to look just a little bit different than what yours does, uh, but it's still built by Volkswagen. So a lot of this stuff will still pertain to you also. One more thing is, is in these videos, you will see several accessories that we have bought for our ID4. And I will put the affiliate links down below where you can purchase these items for your car. Also, I will link our ID4 playlist down below. There are about 30 videos in there of our ID4 over the 30,000 miles. And there's a lot of tips and tricks and accessories and different uh, videos in there. So you might want to take a look at that and see if there's something in there that can help you out with your car, help you learn more about your car, and, and help you get the most out of your ID4. We're going to start with the interior. Now, the interior is very easy to clean. We haven't had any issues. There was no stains or rips or tears or scratches or any major um, issues. The only problem that we saw and that other people have been seeing is the piano black surfaces. Now for us, it wasn't a big issue. Uh, it gets dusty, it does get fingerprints, but it's easy to clean off, they're easy to wipe off. It's just a, a you know, a small little thing. But for us, we like the piano black. We think it gives it a little bit of an upscale look. And a lot of people talk about um, wanting the flat black uh, material. And for us, I really think that if you had flat black in there, then people would be complaining that it looks cheap. It's just a personal preference, um, but for me, I enjoy the piano black. I think it gives it a little touch of class. Okay, so the range for our ID4 was 250 miles, and that's with the rear wheel drive. I believe if you have an all wheel drive, you're gonna be looking at around 240 miles of range. The range is good for most traveling. Um, there are gonna be some areas that might be some dead spots, but for everyday driving, 250 miles is going to be plenty. 240 miles in the all-wheel drive is going to be plenty. Now, what we saw during the summer was we could easily get the 250 miles out of the car during the summer. Sometimes we would even hit get 260 miles out of that car in the summer. Winter is a complete different story. Winter range, there is a significant winter range loss in this car. Very significant. There is no heat pump. Um, so it's not as efficient as some other vehicles, so you do see a lot more of the range loss. We generally saw about a 20% loss or about 50 miles of range loss when it was under 35 degrees. And then we saw about a 10% loss if it was under 50 degrees. So that is something that you need to consider if you do travel a lot, especially in the winter. Um, you're going to only probably get somewhere around 190 to 200 miles of range max. And the colder it gets, the worse it gets. So, that, But other than that, the car is great and you won't have any problems. So now for charging the ID4. With, Volkswagen gives you three years of free charging on Electrify America. And that is amazing. 
We've been driving for 30,000 miles and we've never paid for a DC fast charge except for the very first time we had to charge after we got our car because it wasn't registered in Volkswagen system or the Electrify America system yet. So we did have to pay for our very first charge. But after that, we never paid a dime. Now the max charging speed on the ID4 is 125 kilowatts for the 2021s. I believe 2022 and higher got about 135 kilowatts. And the 21s are supposed to get that whenever we get the software update. And the software update, uh, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. During the summer, we would easily see it max out at about 128 kilowatts. But if it dropped under 50 degrees, a lot of times we would see a max of about 96 kilowatts. And if it was under 35 degrees, a lot of times we were seeing uh, maxes of around 58 kilowatts. Mostly because the battery is cold. It never gets a chance to warm up. It, and batteries do not warm up just by driving the car. Uh, this has happened numerous times. We have driven the car for well over an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, got to charging station and would pull 58 kilowatts because it's 20 degrees outside. That's just how it is. Um, so just understand, unless you have a heat pump or your car is set for preconditioning that will warm up the battery before you get to a charging station, driving it is not going to warm it up. It will warm it up some, but not enough to get your peak charging speeds. All right, we love driving our ID4. I mean, we put 30,000 miles on it in a year. That is basically because we drove it everywhere. I would drive my car or my truck to work, and if I needed to go somewhere after work, I would actually drive home, get the ID4, and then take off because it doesn't cost us anything. I don't know what your rates are at home where you charge, but ours are like nine cents a kilowatt. So it really doesn't cost us that much to charge ours up. So ours was always charged every single day. Anytime my wife needed to go, it was already charged up and ready to go. So we drove that car everywhere. And over those 30,000 miles, we found out that this car is very comfortable. The seats are amazing. They, do, they are great for long trips. They're great for just driving every day loved it the car was always reliable it always started it was always responsive um, there's no wear down in the electric drive motors or anything like that it always behaved exactly the same way as it was when we first bought it everything about the car made it an easy transition uh, from gas to electric now there was a few times that we would hit some sharp bumps or repairs in the road and those would be just a little bit louder inside the car. And I felt that it was getting a little bit louder um, the longer that we had the car and the more miles that we were putting on. Um, not that it was affecting anything major, um, but it just seemed like it was just a little bit louder than it originally was. So the rear wheel drive has 201 horsepower and that was perfectly adequate for this ID4. We thought it was great, especially when we came from a gas vehicle to an electric vehicle and you get that instant torque. And that 200 horsepower actually feels like 300 horsepower. We were like, this car is awesome. We love it. It's great. Let's buy it. And as we got used to it, um, we still thought the 200 horsepower was plenty for that car and it is perfect for somebody who's transitioning over to an electric car for the first time. You're going to love it. You're going to think it's great. Um, I think if you want a little bit more out of it, um, get the all-wheel drive. Um, you will just sacrifice about 10 miles of range, but you're going to get 295 horsepower. So there's your trade-off. Now, the lane keep assist, I thought was a little bit touchy. Now, it's on all the time. I believe in the software, there is somewhere that you can turn it off, but we always just left it alone. There was no reason to go in and keep turning it on and off and whatever. So, my wife likes it, and it didn't bother me most of the time. 
Now, there were some times that I felt that um, I was fighting it, um, especially on country roads here in Illinois. And we live out in the country, so we have these country roads that are unmarked. And it saw the two ditches as the driving lines. And if I moved over because another car was coming, it would want me to, it would keep trying to push me back over to the middle. It would just keep pushing me, trying to saying, I'm too close to that line. That I didn't like. And if I was driving on the interstate and I decided I wanted to get a little bit over away from this big semi on the on my right or my left I would move over and when I get close to that line it would want to push me back over and I just kind of felt sometimes that I had to fight it a little bit um, and it was really bad if I went into go into a turn lane without turning on my turn signal first it would try to push me back over <laughs> into the other lane because it didn't know I was wanting to turn but otherwise it was very very good it's very helpful and I didn't really bother me now the lane centering was another issue i don't use lane centering most of the time because i do like to drive my car um, a lot of people like to turn on the lane centering and just rest their hand on it and let the car kind of keep them there and they'll be there just in case um, i don't like that that's not something that i do um, but when you do turn it on on this id4 it is a very very good job of keeping you in the center it doesn't pinball, it doesn't move around much, it just keeps you right in the center. And um, going around curves, it does a very, very good job of taking the curves. You get some curves that might take it a little bit too fast and um, it, it has struggles to hold on to that center line. But otherwise, it does a good job. My only complaint, though, was that if you have it on for an instant that you need to maybe reach down and grab something so you turn it on to make sure it keeps you there and you can reach down and grab what you need to when you go to shut it off you can't just push it again and just shut the lane centering off you actually have to press the off button which then shuts off your lane centering lane keep assist and your adaptive cruise so then your car starts slowing down and then you got to hit the resume on the control it's just a hassle now the one thing that we have a problem with is how do you shut it off if you want to shut it off? You can't press the button again, it doesn't do anything. And the only way that I've found to shut it off is by sh pushing the button to shut everything off. And that kills your cruise control and everything. And then you've got to go back and hit resume on your cruise control to activate that again. Um, now, one thing I did here is that this was fixed in the um, update anyone who has gotten the update on the 21s to the 3.0 or the 3.1 you shouldn't have that issue anymore i believe you can just press the button and shut it off uh, but if you are do have a 21 and um, you don't have the update i'm sure you know what i'm talking about the other small thing that it bothers me i don't know if it bothers anyone else or if anyone else has experienced it the way that i have is if I'm using adaptive cruise and I'm driving through town and someone is in front of me and they turn, it seems like the system takes a long time to realize that that car is no longer in front of me. You can see when the car actually turns and is out of the way, the car is still showing on the center screen and I am still sitting there waiting to go and then all of a sudden it realizes nothing's there and then takes off. It's a little laggy there for me. I think it should recognize that the car is out of the way a lot sooner than that. I know it's probably for precautionary reasons, um, but just a slight little annoyance that bothers me. So reliability and build quality here, there's really not much to talk about. There's not much to say. It's a Volkswagen. They've been building cars since 1945. Uh, they also, their Volkswagen group uh, builds Porsche and several other different models of cars. So there's no concern with the build quality. It is excellent. It's very good. Everything is quiet um, in the car. Uh, it's never left us stranded. It always turned on and worked. There might have had a few little software issues that we are going to talk about in a little bit. But it always turned on, always drove, never left us stranded anywhere. We've also never had to have anything fixed or replaced. Now, I know that's not the case for everyone. But our car, we have not had anything fixed or replaced on it and never had an issue or needed to. Uh, the car is very, very quiet inside. Uh, it's very, very comfortable, which we talked about earlier. The seats are amazing. They got massaging seats. 
and the interior is just great. Over the 30,000 miles, we also have not noticed any extra noises, sounds, etc. The only extra sound that I've heard and that I was talking about was when we were talking about the suspension. Uh, some sharp impacts seem like it's affecting the suspension a little bit harder and you hear a little bit louder thump when you run over those. But other than that, there's no extra noises like no creaking windows or um, just rattles inside the car or anything like that. It's been excellent. You won't have any problems there. Right, now we are going to talk about the fun thing, the software and the app. Now, everyone has heard about the ID4 software. If you have a 2022 and a 2023, you are not going to see most of these issues. You have a lot better software, a lot better fine-tuned software than those of us that have a 2021. Um, ours is not a first edition. Those people even, I think, even had more issues than what we did. Um, but for us, overall, we didn't have that many issues. We had some. Uh, some little quirky things that just happened to pop up, but it was nothing ever major. Um, a lot of people have had issues with battery and all different kinds of things pop up on their screens, which we never had any of that. But what we did have was we would have lose um, the ability to turn up the volume or turn the volume down. There's also been times where the backup camera was actually stuck on the screen while we're driving down the road. Um, we've had the screen go blank. Um, on us just not start up and not turn on all of those things were easily fixable by holding down the power button on the infotainment screen for about 30 seconds which resets the screen and then it would start back up and everything would be perfectly normal one time one time <laughs> uh, we got ready to leave to go to church and as we pulled out of the garage uh, the infotainment screen never turned on the driver's display never turned on. We drove all the way to church using an app on my cell phone to tell us how fast we were going so we knew our speed. Um, but those screens never turned on. And we got went into church, came back out of church after it was over with, turned on the car, and everything was normal. It was no, no problem. So 90% of the issues that happen can be fixed by resetting the infotainment screen or shutting down the car, lock it, walk away from it for 20 to 30 minutes and come back and generally it ha will have reset itself and everything is working fine. Um, we did have one fun moment which was really interesting which uh, you'll see in a video here that um, <laughs> we actually were driving home and on our driver's display, it was had miles per hour and kilometers um, listed on the screen. And we also had Fahrenheit and Celsius listed on the infotainment screen. At the same time, a little confusing, <laughs> but, but also interesting. And after we shut the car down, the next time we got in it, everything was back to normal. So it does have its little bit glitches and, and bugs, but like I said... Reset the infotainment screen, walk away from the car for 30 minutes, let it just shut down and reset itself. You'll be perfectly fine. If you're enjoying this content, give us a like. If it's your first time here and you want more automotive content, hit the subscribe button because we have a lot more coming. Okay, so we're going to talk about maintenance and the cost of the maintenance. Now, the first two years or 10,000 and 20,000 mile checkup are free and covered by Volkswagen. Now, it only took a couple hours for our service center to run the car through its diagnostics, check everything out, and okay things. And they'll also check your tire wear and a few other things like that, fill up any fluid, washer fluid, that type of stuff. Now, at our 20,000 mile checkup, our front tires were at about 630 seconds and our rear tires were at 430 seconds. Not an emergency to get tires replaced, but we started shopping for tires then. And what we found out was that ours had the Hankook Kenergy all-season tires and that came from the factory. Um, they are great tires. We had no issues driving in the winter. Um, we had no issues with coming out to a flat tire or extra tire wear. These cars are heavy. You will go through tires faster 
than anything else on this car, you will replace more <laughs> sets of tires than you will ever change your brake pads. So just so you're aware, be prepared to buy tires. Nothing else, just tires. So what we did was, is we started shopping around and those hand cooked Kennergy tires we were finding were almost $400 each. I don't know about you, but with us, we're on a little bit of a budget. So we started looking around for some other tires and what I ended up finding were some great tires. They are the Nokian One and they are the XLs and the All Seasons. I was able to find those on walmart.com for $180 each. I got two of those to replace the rear tires, and we were gonna wait till the end of summer, getting into close to winter, to replace the front tires. Um, so that's what we did there, is we just replaced the rears. Great tires, we only spent $400. For 30,000 miles of driving, we only spent $400 on two tires. So there's your maintenance costs up to 30,000 miles. So, would we buy the ID4 again? We would definitely buy the ID4 again. If we were moving into our first electric car, the ID4 would be our choice. It was our choice then, it would be our choice now. If we decided that we wanted um, just a little more oomph in our car, we would probably opt for a 22 or 23 all wheel drive, or maybe even just one of those years that has the updated software, um, just so we were getting a little bit more um, out of our car and a touch more range. But other than that, this car is an excellent first EV for anyone. So if you're wanting to know more about our ID4, there is a playlist right up here and that is going to have about 30 ID4 videos, including tips and tricks and little things to get the most out of your ID4. And I will also link it down in the description. And don't forget any of those accessories that you saw in this video. I will have all of those with the affiliate links linked directly below in the description. And I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and I will see you later.